This is the work of God, to believe in the one whom God has sent. Bread seems to be figuring big time into our readings this morning. There's the bread in the desert for Moses, Aaron, and the Hebrews. Jesus and his followers have just fed the multitude, the loaves and the fishes, last Sunday's gospel. They pro probably want more bread, which is understandable. People can't live without eating. That's when Jesus does what he so often does. He turns the table on the words and their meaning. He tells them that the bread they're interested in is temporary. They'll eat and then they'll be hungry again. The bread he's offering them is forever. They will never be hungry again. Believe in the one whom God has sent because the one whom God has sent, the one who bears the seal of Abba God is giving them the work of God, the bread of God, the truth of God. Truth number one, God loves you. Yahweh, this mysterious spirit you've been following since the beginning of time, is not the alien from Mars. He is not the Wizard of Oz. He is not a disinterested, distant being who judges and condemns you from afar. He is instead someone who is intimately involved in your life. The ministry of Jesus is resplendent with images of just how desperately God loves us. Every hair on your head is counted. How much greater is your worth than the birds of the air and the fish of the sea? But God loves them too. Not only does God love you, but you are God's masterpiece. There is not a sunrise or a sunset that can compare with the magnificence of one human being. Why? because you have the capacity to love as well. Where we are truly created in the image of God, where we are uniquely created in the image of God is in our capacity to love. My personal creation story is that God kept creating and creating and creating until God finally had created someone who could love back, someone who could love in return. I personally like my creation story much better than Adam and his rib Eve and all the rest of the menorah. Believing in the one whom God has sent, the work of God, the bread of God is love which segues to truth number two in this partaking of the bread. Share it with one another. Love one another. Again, the ministry of Jesus is resplendent with just who the other is, and that can sometimes be challenging. In fact, very challenging. The Good Samaritan did not look so good to the Hebrews. They didn't get on so well. Yet the message is clear. Don't judge other people. Give them a chance. This is a good Samaritan. So much so that after his encounter with the Samaritan woman at the well, Jesus would visit with that community for three days. The prodigal son has hurt his father deeply. Yet the father rejoices at the sight of his son coming home to him. And this time, it's forever. How many times does Jesus tell us to love those who have hurt us? Infinitely, without end. Forgiveness is the key to living a life filled with peace. Acceptance, forgiveness, love. The bread of life. Sometimes this bread of life involves raising up. And who raised up people more than Jesus did? The prostitute he saves from stoning, the lepers he touched and healed, the despised tax collector who climbs a tree so he could get a better view. 
Jesus will invite himself and his disciples to recline a table with him tonight. He raises up women and insists that his disciples let the little children come to him. He is truly a man for others, all the others, but with a deep affection for the downtrodden. Jesus, the bread of life, Jesus who sustains and sustains and sustains, reflecting Abba God's sustaining, sustaining, sustaining. 14 years ago, a tiny group of disaffected Catholics were wandering from house to house, much like the Hebrews in our first reading were wandering. At some point, they came to a critical consensus. If they couldn't find what they were looking for, they were going to create it themselves. Not knowing where God was leading, just moving onward in trust, walking by faith, not by sight. This is us. We at Magdalene are Jesus, the bread of life, come to fruition in 2021. Believing in the one whom God has sent is believing in what he said and how he told us to live. The truth of Christ, the heart of Christ, the bread of life, the stuff of life is love for God, for others, and for ourselves. Love of self is probably the most forgotten love of all, yet it is so critical that we love ourselves. And for most of us, it is long overdue. Our faithful God abides. She raised the sun this morning and she will lower it tonight. Tomorrow she will raise it again. The promise was that as long as there is one innocent person, God remains. Today, gathered here this morning, there is more than one person. And around the world this morning, there are thousands. God and her faithful entwined together like a glass of chocolate milk, simply impossible to separate. Last week, a friend of mine told me a poignant story involving his son and granddaughter. His son lives in the South and came to visit him for a few days. On one of the mornings of the visit, his son called his family to chat with them for a few minutes. They were FaceTiming and at one point, his six-year-old granddaughter commandeered the whole conversation. His son tried to gently end the conversation and told her it was time for him to visit with his own dad. At that point, his granddaughter says to his son, Daddy, I love you so much. I just can't hang up. From the Hebrews wandering in the desert, to the loaves and the fishes, to a small group of disaffected Catholics trying to find their footing, we hear the message Jesus and Abba God so desperately want us to hear. I love you so much, I just can't hang up. 